Ey Shroma Shroma Slav, Sosba give no praise to Yahba Shem Yahu Shaba Shem Rakakadash. The Balonas to the Puzzle GMS, some honesty, brothers doing the work and truth, one sincerity. Uh, just meditating on, um, you know, how the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And, uh, you know, thought, why not just do a video on it? I've um, got a couple of scriptures open and just see really where the Spirit goes with it. Right, so this is Job uh, 1, we'll start from verse 13, to get a bit of context, we've got, you know, points in 21, so I'll just read this bit quick. Right, it says, And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were ploughing and the asses feeding behind them, beside them, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and only I am escaped to t alone to tell thee. Right? And Ali Chabez, he's bringing some bad news. Literally, as he's bringing that bad news, right? It says, while he was yet speaking, there came up, came also another and said, The fire of the Most High has fallen uh, from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped to learn to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came another, came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants. Uh, with the edge of the sword and I only am escaped alone to tell thee and while he was yet speaking there came uh, also another thy sons and said thy sons and thy uh, daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house and behold there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and I only am escaped alone to tell thee and I said then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Uh, so you see that there, what, what, what you're witnessing there is basically what you can infer, you know, deduce from that is Job had wealth, right? Job had wealth, so he had, you know, you, you go through this, which says, um, you know, eating and uh, uh, drinking wine in their brother's house, you know, so he had oxen, right, and, and asses, so that means he had land, right? And he had servants to, to, to deal with those oxen and asses. And he, well, he also had uh, had sheep and servants to deal with those sheep. Right? So those servants would have had needed places to stay. Right? They would have needed wages. They would have needed food. Which means he would have had all of that. Right? And then he also had camels. Right, and slain the servants. He said it came out in three bands, so that means he needed a lot of camels or a lot of servants. Right, so basically, Job had real, you know, Job had wealth, right? And then, it, but it goes on to say that he he lost all of that, right? And then Job makes a point in verse twenty one says, um, and said, naked came I out of my my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of Yahweh, right? So the Lord has the power to, you know, to, to, to give, has the power to take you away. And uh, in fact, if I read uh, 1 Samuel 2 and 7, it says, Yahweh maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. Right? He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes. Right? And that's the process that's, that's, that's you know, it, it getting ready to happen to us. Right, because right now we're, you know, we're the poor, we're, we're, you know, in all intents and purposes in the eyes of the world, pieces of shit. Right, but the Lord is going to raise us up and sit us up in, um, what do you call it, and sit us up in a, uh, in a, uh, 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 basically we're going to be uh, kings and priests to the Lord. Right, join heirs with Yahweh Shai. Right, so this is Romans 8. Uh, and 17 is what I want. It says, um, for that tree, they said, The Spirit bear, itself beareth witness with our spirit, verse 16, that we are the children of the Most High. Right? It says, And if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High, and join heirs with Yahweh Shai. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Right? So you, right now, we're, we're in that lower state. You know, our, our position as rulers of the world has been taken away from us, but the Lord. The Lord is gonna, you know, when when he comes back, you know, when when the nation of Israel gets reestablished, he's gonna put Israel back in their right full position, right? You also get Second Ezra two, 
and 46. 46? 46 is all I want. I'm starting from verse 43. It says, And in the midst of them there was a young man of a high stature, or reference in Yahushai, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns, right, and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. Right, so we go back here, right, it says he raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes. Right, that's, you know, that's what's going to happen to us. Right, it says, and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are Yahweh's, and he hath set the world upon them. Right, but the point there is, you know, the Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. And, you know, he can be, you know, make, make you spiritually poor. Make you spiritually rich, carnally poor, carnally rich. You know the Lord. At the end of the day, He's the Most High. He can do whatever you know. He can do what He wants, right? This is um, Sirach too, because you know, obviously, in this truth and this thing of ours, right? Things are gonna get given to you, and things are gonna get taken away, right? And some things ain't gonna be given to you. Period. Right, because at the end of the day, Lord, Lord knows what's most expedient for you. You know, brothers will, you know, tell stories about how we made when they first came in the truth. You know, they couldn't get jobs, but in that period of time, you know, they were just getting deep into the scriptures. Right, so it was needful at that time that, you know, that brother wasn't working, so he can just study the scriptures, and you know, over a course of time. You know, uh, the law basically said, hey, you know, now you can have a job, you know, sustain yourself or, you know, whatever, what have you, right? Because then all, everything is the Lord's program, right? You know, because brothers would be like, yo, man, look, you know, I was, I was applying for jobs and, you know, the, uh, the, 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 only, the only one that replied was the one that was paying the most. You know, brothers would tell those kind of stories, man, right? But then brothers will be like, man, I, play, I applied for a hundred jobs and no one got back to me. And it will be a literal hundred job as well. Right? But uh, yeah, let me, let me, uh, let me continue. All right, this is a Sirach 2, says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. Because all the things that we go through now, especially, they ain't, you know, it, nothing's really happened yet. Everything's still calm. Um, it, you know, it's all like I said. Nothing's really happened. You know, the time of Jacob's trouble hasn't, you know, even really truly began yet. You know, that's when they start implementing that chip, and it's you know, it's a, it's a legit. You know, you're gonna stay stand firm for the name of Yah Bashem Yah Shai, which is also what it's um. You know, in fact, in fact let me uh, get it in here, right. It says, uh, verse 46, it says, then, uh, second verse 2, 46, says, then said I to the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, it is the son of the Most High, whom they have confessed in the world, then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh, right? So the guys, you know, the men of the Lord that make it are the ones that will stand firmly for the Lord, right? Though, the, you know, for the name of the Lord, you know, what, what he represents, right? This truth. Right? Those are the ones that the Lord's going to be, you know, putting crowns on, 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 on their heads for, right? Uh, let me carry on. All right, so it says, um, cleave unto him and depart. Well, oh, yeah, no, there's an important point there, and constantly endure. Right, so we'll, we'll be going through certain things. Like I said, like the point of this is, Lord give and take the way. You know, Lord might you know take away your your job, might take away your uh, you, you know your your place to stay. Right, and your your thing is to endure that. Right, and you know just not to run away from uh, from any of the hardships that you go through. Right, the Lord Lord has the power to do that, and He can do that. You know, to test your integrity, but at the same time to build you up, because the Lord is balanced. All the hardships you go through, there will be a, a counterbalance that is there to build you up in one way or another. Spiritually, carnally, whatever it is, right? It says, I am cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. 
whatsoever whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Right? So when you know, if the Lord was to take away age deal cheerfully, because the here's one thing, you know, whenever we're um you know, we get what we want from the Lord, we always, you know, we always hey, hey, Dora broke down by shimmy or ha 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 right? But we never, you know, when we get chastened and all of that, we, we don't thank the Lord. Because, like I said, there's balance. The Lord is balanced. There's, there's always a good thing that comes from the chastening or or, for, or from whatever it is that you're, you're going through, right? He says, um, and yeah, it says, take it cheerfully, man. You know, because you've you got to understand that the Lord has 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 his program and you're, you're just going through and whatever it is you're going through is for your own benefit. Right, it goes on to say in verse five, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Right, you know, the whole chapter is good, you know, you can read the whole chapter. All right, but this is Sirach eleven and twenty one says, Marvel not at the works of sinners, but trust in the Lord and abide in thy labour, for it is an easy thing in the sight of the Lord on the sudden to make a poor man rich. Right? So the Lord can, you know, take you from a lower state and put you on a higher state. Just like that, he can do the opposite too. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Right? Shall we receive good from the Most High only and, and not and not and not and not evil? And I believe that's Job the second chapter. Um, just in case I want to reference back in Job. Uh, right, it says, uh, Job 2 and 9 says, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse the most high and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of the most high, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Right? So Job is saying, Lord, man, you, you, you get good and you get bad. But that's just what you've got to deal with. You know, that's just a part of this thing because the Lord is balanced. All right, uh, so where were we? Where were we? Yeah, but like I said, you know, because the riches, ultimately, especially on this side, those riches that we should be caring about, those spiritual riches, you know, the, the gift of faith. Right, it's always a good thing to you know um, give thanks to the Lord that we have this truth because the majority of the people, you know, we'll see at the camp all the time, they they don't have this truth and the majority of them don't want this truth. They don't want it, right? Because it means that they have to stop living the way that they're living. It means that they have to, um, you know, help for you. Hey. Alright, so, 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 so let, me, let me get it. It's Ephesians 2 and 8. So for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of the Most High. Right? So the spiritual riches that we want, man, number one is that faith. Right? Because without faith, it is impossible to please Him. And he was, he was 11 and 6. Right? It says, um, he was 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to, to please Him. For he that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Right? So when you put these two scriptures together, you realize that actually only the Lord has only ever wanted a few people to be saved. Right? Because it says you can't please him without faith. Right? But then he's the one that gives you faith. So that means it goes into the, the predestination, right? That you 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 know that you have people predestined for the foundation of the earth uh, to, you know, to, to for salvation, right? So it's Ephesians um, 1 and 4 and 5. It says, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of the children by Yahweh Shemashiach to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Right, so I said that's that's the um faith is the number one spiritual gift that we want, right? That that spiritual riches and like, like as as I was saying, the Lord giveth and taketh away. That's why you got to um pray uh, that the Lord doesn't take the spirit away from you. You know, as uh, King David prayed in this Psalms, right? So Psalms fifty one eleven says, "Cast me not away from Thy presence, 
and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Right? And you've got countless examples of where the Lord's done that to certain guys. They've just, you need to just zap that spirit from them. You don't want to be that guy, man. Right? And it also comes with humility as well because, hey, look at what Paul said, right? This is 1 Corinthians 9 and 27. This says, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I've preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Right? So Paul's there saying, look, I've done all this work, but look, if, if the Lord ain't with it, I'm, you know, Lord might get rid of me. Well, and that's the spirit you should have, because as soon as you think, yeah, man, I made it, you know, man, I'm, I'm going to be on that chariot, man. That's, that's, that's the moment where you start opening yourself up to all kinds of demons. Right, obviously we have hope and we have faith, otherwise, that, you know, otherwise why are we doing this? If you don't have hope and salvation, why are, we, why are you doing this? Well, obviously we hope in salvation, but we know that our, our our salvation isn't a sure thing until we're on that chariot. Right? But our Lord's will with that you are edified, and um, until the next one, say Shalom.